YouTube team keep it clean welcome to another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if you don't want to don't worry about it it's okay I love y'all team keep it clean I always always appreciate the conversation like I always say whether you agree with what I say or you agree with what somebody else says or you disagree with what I say or somebody else says, I don't care. I just appreciate the conversation, appreciate the respect uh, and appreciate you all always sharing how you feel about whatever it is that we talk about. Don't matter what it is. I, I love y'all. Seriously, I appreciate y'all a whole lot. Let's get into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. First question came from B. Beanham. He said, I saw something about Lamar Jackson saying heck no to a tweet about Marquise Brown going to Kansas City. Yeah, he did say that because there was a reporter that was like, oh, well, maybe the Chiefs should inquire about Ravens Marquise Brown since they got all those draft picks. Um, he said, could we as Ravens fans take this as relief from any Lamar Jackson trades because he makes it sound like he still wants to play with the Ravens. Have a great day. You're amazing with all the info. Appreciate you, Bing. Um, he did say, he, he said the other day, too, he said, oh, if the, if the Ravens, like, let me go or traded me, something like that, then it, it would hurt my feelings. And I'm sure that it would, um, but I'm sure he would also uh, end up getting over it. Uh, and he would, he, I'm sure he would not be able to wait for the day uh, where he got to play the Ravens again, if that ever happened. Um, but I'm sure that he wants to be with the Ravens. Uh, but at the same time, like I told people, um, it nothing matters until he signs. Nothing matters until he signs a long-term deal. That's it. That That will be the only way to truly end any speculation any rumors, any, oh, could Lamar end up here? Could he end up there? The only way to end, because he, he could even come out and say, oh, this is not, oh, yeah, I love the Ravens. I know some people like to bring up the tattoo that he got on his chest. Oh, yeah, he got a Ravens tattoo on his chest, so that means he wants to be here forever. Oh, okay. It's, it's like nothing until a contract is signed. And you got, like, you got to understand this. And I know as fans, fans think with their hearts. And they're like, oh, we love the player. Which, which we do, we love these players. They're like, oh, yeah, woo-hoo. But it's a business. And until that contract is signed, I mean, ask Darius Smith. <laughs> until that contract is signed, then that will be the only way that all this stuff gets shut down. Next question came from Ansley. Said, hey, Engraven, big fan of the channel, but I'm scared about Lamar and his contract extension. He's already about to hit his fifth year plus cap space this year. Has been very interesting. Uh, Morgan Moses, a solid replacement, and Marcus Williams was an amazing pickup. But do you believe we can pick up Bobby Wagner? Don't get me wrong. I love Bobby, but cap space is an issue. Um, yeah, they, if, they could, if they wanted Bobby Wagner, they can get Bobby Wagner. But Bobby Wagner, probably by the time you see this video, he will have already signed with the Rams. So he's visiting there, and you know the Rams. Rams, Rams they, they make it happen with anybody. If they want somebody, they get that somebody, usually 9.9 .9 times out of 10. So I don't envision Bobby Wagner being a Raven. I'm sick of these draft picks. First question came from my guy, Daryl. He said, what's up, fam? EDC has drafted 26 players in the last three years, and we only have about five players that play. Uh, here's the list. Now, name five superstar players we missed out on, Hopkins and Howard, uh, for a draft full of players that are not on a team or on the field. You look at stuff in a different way. Can you please make this make sense? And we have 10 picks again this year. Would you trade some to get DK Metcalf, your boy DD. Yes, um, I certainly would. I, I, ooh, I would love if the Ravens traded and got DK Metcalf. Oh my goodness, because that's that's everything that we would want. Because he is somebody that is he the best route runner? No, but he's good enough. But he's somebody that's gonna go up and get it. A physical, physical wide receiver. He's a wide receiver that you ain't taking him off the field. 
For that, the whole rotation that Ravens be doing with their what? No, you're not. You're not taking DK Metcalf off the field. Why? Because he's a good receiver, but he's also a great blocker and a very physical block. And you know, Ravens gonna run that ball, and Ravens gonna ask some receivers to block. So you ain't you ain't doing that whole little rotation with no DK Metcalf, man. You're not doing that. So um, it would just make sense. But now, see, if you traded for a DK Metcalf. That let that leads to the question, all right, what you gonna do next as far as the money? Because DK Metcalf, he wasn't drafted in the uh in the first round. So he doesn't have a fifth year option. So he's on the last year of his deal. Hollywood Brown was drafted in the first round. So he he has the opportunity for a fifth year option. And Eric DaCosta said he was gonna pick up his fifth year option, but he has not done it yet. And uh, you so we still waiting on that official. Oh, the Ravens picked up Hollywood Brown fifth year. Have not seen that notification yet. Still waiting on it. Haven't seen it. So we'll see. But it, who are you going to pay? Who are you going to keep? Because you you obviously uh, gave up. Well, if they got DK Metcalf, they would have given up draft picks to obtain and acquire one DK Metcalf. So both players would be invested in draft pick wise. Who do you choose? I would love if they would keep both. But with, with DK Metcalf, he would give us that the one that's missing, an established wide receiver who's not old, who still is in his prime. I mean, he ain't probably even hit his prime yet, but he could still ball out. So I'm just I'm just, just thinking about it. It just I hate thinking about it because I don't think it's going to happen. I would love for it to happen. I don't think it's going to happen, though. No, but just imagining a DK Metcalf. A Hollywood Brown, a Rashad Bateman, a Mark Andrews. And then you got your old offensive line, right? Then you got J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards coming back. I, mm, man, I just, ah, just because it kind of makes you sad just thinking about the possibilities of it. Um, but just realizing that it's, it's probably not going to be a move that the Ravens uh, make. Um, so it, it will be nice, but yeah. And as far as the draft, yeah, um, the thing with well, EDC, the drafts have been getting better over time. Because, like, first draft, he got Hollywood Brown in the first round. Okay, he's obviously been an impact player for the Ravens. He got Jalen Ferguson, Miles Boykin, Justice Hill, Ben Powers, Eamon Marshall, Dayla Mack, Trace McSorley. So he's got, like, one real impact player from his first draft. Just one. And probably all of these guys, the rest of them are probably not going to be on the team this year. Jalen Ferguson, Miles Boykin, Justice Hill, Ben Powers, Eamon Marshall, Daylon Mack, Trace Mills. Trace Mills probably obviously not on the team anymore, but most of the 2019 draft class is probably not going to be on the team anymore this year. So that's just 2019. That's the, what, three years ago. Uh, but then the following draft, uh, the, the impact started getting better because yeah, he got Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, Matt Abike, DuVernay. Um, Malik Harrison hasn't really had an impact yet Tyree Phillips, he has had an impact it's, it's been a little bit of good but A little bit of bad too But Ben Bredesen, no, he's gone already Broderick Washington Jr., he had an impact finally last year James Proche, no, hasn't really had an impact Geno Stone hasn't really had an impact either He ended up getting on the field last year Due to the situation But he ain't really had no crazy impact In fact, they drafted him, then they cut him And he went to the Texans So he... Yeah, then this, this year, Rashad Bateman, he had an impact when he did get on the field. Adafi Away had an impact. Ben Cleveland, he started starting toward the end of the season. Brandon Stevens started starting toward the end of the season, but he was playing even before he started starting. Tylen Wallace was just special teams. Um, then he got hurt. Sean Wade cut. Dalen Hayes stashed, then came back, then got injured. Ben Mason cut. So it's been, it's been a little wishy-washy. And you're not going to hit on every single draft pick. You're not. It just it don't work like that. Um, so EDC, like I said, o over time, he, he has been getting better uh, every year. Next question came from Zoe. He said, I was in a Twitter space that you had came in on. I was wondering, were you in there to hear them speak about Christian Watson out of North Dakota State? He's 6'4", 211. In the space, they were talking about how mock drafts, they have the Browns picking him right in front of us in the second round, which would be problematic. We need to figure out how to make him a Raven. And yeah, the... Uh, First three rounds, Ravens taking a receiver, whether it's Watson, whether it's Jersey Drake, um, whether it's, uh, oh, now nah, I can't remember his name. Not Garrett Wilson. What's his name? Oof, I can't think of the one's name who, 
uh, I can't think of his name. I ain't gonna just sit up here and even try to remember it right now. Um, they're gonna have their options. They they certainly gonna have their options. And they sitting at eight. I mean, I was about to say they sitting at eighteen. They sitting at fourteen. I mean, who knows? They could end up trading back to sitting at eighteen. But they sitting at fourteen right now. So you're at the uh, in the top half of selections in the first round, second round, and whatever other rounds too. Um, so you are going to have a good amount of receivers to choose from. Uh, but my thing with that, they have to, the, and it depends on what they do with the rest of free agency too. Um, but they have to get one early because the inve- in order for that receiver to thrive, the investment has to be there. If they draft the receiver in the, 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 the later they draft the receiver, the less chance that receiver has of having an impact. The less chance that receiver has of making it. The less chance that receiver has of being on the field. You draft the receiver in the first round, you best believe that receiver is going to see the field. You draft the receiver in the second round. It depends on what they do in free agency. They'll have a chance, but it depends on what they do in free agency. Third round, it's pretty shaky from there. It's very shaky uh, as far as the Ravens. But whether it's Christian Watson or whoever, man, um, I do really feel like Ravens, they they still not are not done at wide receiver and should not be done at wide receiver. Love Rashad Bateman, love Hollywood. Uh, but to get that big body guy that's gonna go up and get it, yeah, that's that's what they need in my opinion. <laughs> Speaking of wide receivers, uh next question came from my boy Thomas. He said, What's up in Graven? With Cheetah going to Miami and them already being stacked at wide receiver, do you think we should try to trade for Preston Williams? He's only twenty five, he's like six five, two twenty, so he'll give us that big body wide receiver we've been needing. I don't think we will have to give up too much for him, maybe one of those fourth round comp picks or something. I feel like him at the number one, Bateman as the number two or one B and use Hollywood as your three slash slot guy will go crazy. Or you could put Bateman in the slot and leave Hollywood on the outside because we know how, uh, let's just say, fragile Keith can be sometimes when it comes to running across that middle. Sorry for the long question, but it just feels like another typical Ravens offseason. And when you look at some of the ways these other teams are stacking weapons and building their rosters, it makes me feel underwhelmed as a Ravens fan. L-O-L. Um, Preston Williams is an option, um, but there's, that, there's Devontae Parker, too. Um, Devontae Parker... He's somebody that you keep hearing about the possibility of the Dolphins moving from, moving on from him. Um, so, and as far as Preston Williams, if, if they were to add a receiver, in my opinion, I would just I would rather them get somebody that's like really established and like really like that, not a potential guy. Because Preston Williams, he ain't like like that. He could play, but he like I, I want somebody that's like that. So I don't think Preston Williams happens. Um, I, yeah, they did sign him to a, a one year deal. Um, so it, it wasn't like he would command any like crazy money, anything like that. But no, nah, I don't see them doing that for Preston. I, I could see them waiting, I went waiting and waiting and waiting until those uh those cap casualties come about. Um, and then them choosing a possible wide receiver from that. Next question came from my boy Slick. He said, "What's up, Engraving? I was asking, what weapon should we get, Lamar, uh, Odell, or Jarvis Landry? Because I think in order for us to get a Super Bowl win." Uh, we need to get either one. Um, if the Ravens went that route, get both. <laughs> get both. Because um, with Odell, he's hurt. So you don't know when he's going to be back. He might not even be back till like the middle of the season. You don't know. Um, Jarvis Landry, he's not hurt. Um, that would be a quality wide receiver. Wouldn't be the big body, but either be a physical wide receiver. Wouldn't be the big body I think we could use, but he's somebody that's uh that's definitely he could help Lamar out uh a lot. Um just as a guy, a veteran guy who who knows what he's doing, man. Knows how to attack the defense. It's the only thing if you got <laughs> If you got Jarvis Landry or Odell Beckham Jr., you just you you, you gotta make them uh hug it out with uh MP and Marlon Humphrey. Next question came from my boy Jonathan M. He said, Engraven, I had a question I would like to hear your thoughts on. After hearing your live stream, I really thought about the Ravens situation as a whole from the organization on down to the players. I can't help but think now that the Ravens organization does not believe in their quarterback as much as they believe in a great defense and a solid running game. Uh, When we look at the 2000 Super Bowl and the 2012 uh, one thing that the Ravens pride themselves on was a solid run game and a great defense. Even between the 12-year gap, all of the quarterbacks that 
the Ravens got were low tier quarterbacks until Joe Flacco, until Joe Flacco got drafted. And even then, we have never seen the Ravens go after top tier quarterbacks like uh, Peyton Manning. Um, do you think that the Ravens organization still holds on to their mantra, a great defense and a solid run game? Well, yeah, for sure. That's obvious. I think they definitely do. Um, uh, oh, okay. And he said, and is this the reason the Ravens haven't went all out because of their mantra and they have never really been a losing organization for a long period of time? Uh, is it a case of arrogance and pride on the Ravens old ways of building a team? Well, yeah, Ravens for sure. They, um, we all know they run, run, run the ball and play good defense. That was their saying back then. Um, and it seems like that is their saying still right now. And I think one of the biggest things is that the Ravens, um, and, and and even before Flacco, they had Steve McNair for that year and change. But yeah, the quarterback, it's been rough for them at quarterback. So it's like when you, if you're used to doing something a certain way for such a long period of time, um, it's like in a relationship. Um, in a relationship, you you can be used, and, and this is kind of an extreme, but I, I'll use me for example. Before I met my wife, um, I was used to a lot of drama in previous relationships. I was used to a lot of craziness. I was used to, it, it, oh boy. I, I was used to just a lot of, there was a lot of negativity and, and just, it was just always some craziness happening uh, in relationships that I had been in prior to me meeting my wife. So then when I met my wife and there was not drama, it was like, whoa, I, 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 I initially I didn't know how to act. I was like, whoa, I, it, was, it was weird. And it caught me off guard because it's not what I was used to. So initially, I, 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 but then I learned to really appreciate her that much more over time as we were dating. And it was like, oh, wow, this, so this is how it's supposed to be. All that other, it's not supposed, okay. I, I can't get with this. I, I Okay, I appreciate this. So it's similar to the Ravens with how for the longest they weren't, they, they were just defense and yeah, run the ball. They're not used to having a quarterback like Lamar Jackson. They're not used to it. And you hope that they develop that appreciation for one Lamar Jackson over time. You You hope that because you, you know they love Lamar Jackson and everything he brings to them. I mean, he makes them a lot of money, too. But you hope that they are able to sort of adapt to having a Lamar Jackson instead of continuing to just sort of be stuck in the old ways. And, yeah, again, they, the Ravens, they have been had they have had a certain level of success. Because they have not been this losing team, they haven't been this bad team, but then at the same time. The where's the postseason success? The regular season success is nice, yeah. And I, 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 I just hate hearing when Ravens fans, whenever you bring that up, the Ravens lack of success recently. Ravens fans will be like, "Oh well, what do you, what do you? At least we're not the Jags, we're not the Jets, we're not the Dolphins, we're not the Browns, we're not the insert whatever team hasn't been making a playoffs so or had just have been having really bad records." It's like, yeah, that's true. But we're also not the Chiefs. Even the Bengals, they just made the Super Bowl. We're not the Bucks. What Ravens fans always aim low. So many of them always aim low. Well, we're not those teams. We're not, yeah, but we're also not the top teams. So instead of comparing us to the low teams, why don't you compare the Ravens to the top? What's your thoughts on what could be? Next question came from my boy Brandon G. So just looking for your opinion. First off, I hope you and the family are doing well. Apologize for the length, but just follow me for a second and imagine what could be. Oh, this is a long one. He said, QBs, Lamar and Huntley, running backs, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, fullback, Pat Ricard, wide receivers, Rashad Bateman, Hollywood, Devin DuVernay, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace, and... <laughs> Julio Jones. Uh, we can get him for a moderate deal. Even with the injuries, some can argue he's the best of the bunch, even at 33. We signed Steve Smith Sr. at 35. Julio can give us more production than what Sammy Watkins did, especially with him being the third or fourth option. Tight ends Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, and more than likely we draft a third tight end. Uh, real quick, just to stay with the Julio thing real quick. Um, I would not mind if they signed Julio, but they would have to get another wide receiver that's a big frame wide receiver that's going to go up and get it. Whether it's through the draft, whether it's through a trade, whether it's through free agent, but somebody young and not injury prone. If you're going to get Julio, yeah, it got to be a moderate deal. 
because you just you you feel like the injuries will be on the way. It'd be like another. It'd be like a bigger Sammy Watkins. It would, that's what it would be like a bigger Sammy Watkins, a better Sammy Watkins too, but a bigger Sammy Watkins. We know Julio. He he was a ball and whatnot, but. If they were to sign a Julio Jones, I wouldn't be mad, but that, that could not be it. All right, back to the question. He said our offense was more explosive with the three the three headed monster at tight end, um, and the three tight end sets. So on paper, this could be the best offense we've had. It'll definitely be the best offense we've built around Lamar Jackson. On defense, nose tackles, Justin Matter, BK, Michael Pierce, Derek Wolf on the edge, Adafi Away, Tyus Bowser, and I oh, see I like this one. I know a lot of Ravens fans don't like this one, but I love this one. Jadavian Clowney. Oh, I would love that one. Um, we can get him on a cheap deal since he's had two consecutive prove-it deals and hasn't cracked double-digit sacks. Like, okay, this is why it's all about context. He, ain't he get nine sacks last year? And I think the year before that he had like nine, two, but he had nine sacks last year. So, yeah, yeah, it is technically not double-digit sacks, but, like, you saying it like, oh, he got like three or four sacks or something like that. No, man, don't do that. Um... But see, that's uh, that's the Ravens thinking. The Ravens thinking they they do it all the time, man. They 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 will have you thinking the same way that that they're thinking. He said we can get him on a cheap deal. They tried to get Zadarius Smith on that, and you see what happened. Anyway, uh, he said Jadavian Clowney's a great run defender, and with all corners and safety tandem, his chances of coverage sacks will be higher than it's ever been his whole career. Uh, linebackers Patrick Queen and with the fourteenth pick. Devin Lloyd and Nicobe Dean. Or a draft one in the later rounds. Linebacker is loaded this year. I would love to see Bobby Wagner next to Queen. But I don't think that's realistic. Okay. Uh, corners, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, the number 14th pick. Amar Gardner, Derek Stingley, or Andrew Booth. And Patrick Peterson. He's better than anyone else we have or have had last year at the nickel. I don't think he's a free agent. I don't believe. Where, where did he go last year? To like the Vikings? Or something? I don't know what his contract status is. But I don't think he's a free agent. But I don't know. Anthony Aver, Jimmy Smith, Brandon Stevens, Chris Westry, even Marshall, Khalil, Dorsey, Tavon Young. He was saying that Patrick Peterson is better than all of them. Uh, safeties, Marcus Williams and Chuck Clark. Uh, most of our draft picks will be for depth. We have nine picks in the top 100 picks. With those additions, we can continue to pick best player available. Imagine this is our roster when we are on the clock. We could draft David Ajabu at pick 45 or Jameson Williams at 14 and let them rehab and not have the pressure of filling holes. I know this is very long-winded, but what do you think? <coughs> Woo. Was well, long way. I need some water now. Uh, but he said, <laughs> I hope it makes it on question. Subscribers, keep up the great work on the channel. Uh, it's drastically underrated. Hey, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, that, was, that was a fun one. That was a fun one. Adding a Julio Jones. Adding a um, Jadavian Clowney. Um, adding Patrick Peterson. So I, I like my, my guy. He ain't playing. He ain't messing around when it comes to adding some quality players on the squad so i'm with you and then of course you still got the draft too next question came from my guy gold morano he said is it just a matter of time engraved i'm jumping in the pool with so many others on this lamar to miami buzz some things that i didn't hear you mention in your previous video number one look at the suit that lamar wore to the draft it was miami dolphins green i had never seen an aqua <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> That's just a Florida thing, man. Florida thing, if, if you down here in South Florida, especially, you, you'll you see a lot more brighter, more vi vibrant colors than you used to. So I that, that ain't got nothing to do with the Dolphins. It's just it's just a Florida thing, man. But anyway, he said um the suit that Lamar Jackson wore to the draft, it was Miami Dolphins green. I had never seen an aqua green suit before that day. LOL. Remember how angry Lamar was when primetime interviewed him? Miami drafted a safety at 11 with Ryan Tannehill at the end of his contract. I believe Lamar wanted to join the Dolphins. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he, he probably would have loved to get drafted by the Dolphins because he would have been right at the crib. Um, he said, number two, Lamar hates the cold weather. He loves Florida weather, and why wouldn't he? I mean, you, you could say that for anybody, though. I hate the cold weather, too. Like, uh, so many people do. Like, you, you can say that for anybody. But you did say that. You said, and who, why wouldn't he? Number three, remember the Jackson Five, uh, the five touchdowns in Miami a few years ago? Who did that first touchdown go to? Hollywood. They both had something to prove in that game. Lamar was extra motivated to show the team who looked past the hometown boy how big of a mistake they made. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. But well, what happened in the last Dolphins game? <laughs> what happened in the last Dolphins game? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, he did the Jackson 5 back in 2019, but what happened in 2021? He ain't looked too mo motivated there. Um, number four, he said, we know that EDC would never give any player who depends so 
heavily, we know EDC will never give any player who depends so heavily on his legs a 10-year deal like Casey did for Mahomes. I don't think EDC would give anybody a 10-year deal. <laughs> he said it. Future headline, the Miami Dolphins trade two first-round picks, one second-round pick, and two third-round picks for Lamar Jackson. Oof, that would be a uh, big yikes. A lot of people would be crying if that happened, including myself. Next question came from my boy Frank. He said, oh, what's up, brother? Thank you for all that you do. Wanted to ask what you think the odds of us landing Jordan Davis are. It's been a while since we've seen real flashes from our defensive on that side of the ball, uh, and I feel like that's part of who we are. I feel like he can make an impact and possibly uh, the counter to work the, the Bengals and try to bring... Uh, that knowing the Brad, now knowing that Burroughs releases the ball so fast. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. Well, Burrow actually he don't release the ball fast. Burrow be holding on to that football because Burrow be going for them big shots, them kill shots, man. Um, I man, every time I talk about Jordan Davis to the Ravens, a lot of people say they don't even think he'll fall that far. I was like, oh, okay, well, ain't mad at that, big fella, like literally big fella, like huge fella. Um, but I, I wouldn't be mad at that. Um, it just depends on how everything else stacks up But he will certainly be somebody That would bring something that the Ravens are missing um, And that's some um, interior pressure Like he ain't, he ain't the best like interior pass rusher in the world But he could be disruptive Like look, you look at him, he's very disruptive Because it ain't no, nobody's going one-on-one -on -one with him, man Nobody's winning one-on-one -on -one with him Unless you hold, clip, grab And still that probably won't be enough so I, I wouldn't be mad at Jordan Davis. Ravens culture. Next question came from Wanya. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope everything is all good with you and the fam. Just wanted to get your opinion and thoughts on some things. I apologize in advance if this message is long. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, I wanted to know, what are your thoughts on John Harbaugh as a coach? Because in my eyes, one minute I love him as a coach, but the next minute he has me scratching my head and asking myself, how did he get a head coaching job when he used to be a special teams coach? Um, well, John Harbaugh, he's cool. Players coach. Um, I just feel like his philosophy could be it, it could use some tweaking and um, some adapting to the current state of the NFL. Um, and I feel like he should not be in charge to hire the coordinators, especially offensive coordinators, because he brings in his guys that um, guys that are usually like no threat to him at all. Um, uh, and guys that uh, are just usually past their prime. So I would, I think that his, his philosophy just needs to change. He's not a bad coach, um, but I feel like philosophy needs some adapting to get with the current NFL. Uh, anyway, so next I wanted to know, what would you do if you own the Ravens? How would you handle the struggles that we have, that we have? Because if it were me, I wouldn't fire people left and right, but I definitely let everybody know failure won't be tolerated. I'll give you an example. The season ending press, if I was the owner and I heard Harbaugh say what he said, I'm calling him and Roman in my office and letting them know if we're healthy this season coming up and we don't make the AFC championship, changes will be made. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> I, I, they, they probably did that already. They probably did that already. Like, think about, like, with Harbaugh, um, he, we ain't heard nothing about his extension yet. We ain't heard nothing about his deal. But on top of that, like, even with Roman, with Roman, um, they hired T. Williams and Keith Martin. Like they don't, you don't, you don't bring in guys to help somebody with their job if they're good at their job. That's you letting them know officially that hey, you are not good at your job, and we're bringing in guys to help you because you need help. So if somebody who's not good at their job needs help, that person is ultimately going to get replaced. So I think this is pretty much it for for Roman anyway. Um, and I, and I think like the Ravens, like it, it's it's a lot that's going on this season, um, because a lot of stuff is coming to the forefront. Um, you got Lamar in his fifth year. Uh, you got Harbaugh at the end of his contract, unless they they sign him to a new deal. Well, he still ain't heard nothing yet, but you got a lot of like so. This this is such a big season for the Ravens, and yeah, they if if they're healthy, then ooh, it's, even if I think even if they're not healthy, but if they're healthy, too, ooh, it ain't no, it ain't gonna be no excuses for nobody, baby. Um. Anyways, uh, he also said, in your opinion, why do you think the front office is so cheap on offense during the offseason and free agency but has no problem breaking the bank on defense? The 2000 defense ain't coming back. Um, I think because they're so used to being a good defense and on offense being like subpar, being like, oh, OK. That's how they have been for the longest. Defense was their thing. And even us as Ravens fans, we will be more excited to see the defense on the field than the offense so many times. This was before Lamar Jackson. But that's how it would be. So I think Ravens, like, that's, that's their thing. Defense has been their thing. That's how their team was built. 
Um, he said, do you think it's time to change our offensive identity? Like, should we go in a more pass-first offense? Because that seems to be the new wave. I, I think what you, yeah, I, yeah, the, just philosophy, man. Philosophy, the, the passing offense needs to be upped. And it, they started last year now. But, again, I, I keep saying that. I, I just wonder if that was just because J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards were hurt. Now, I don't want the Ravens to get away from the running game completely. No, not at all. But I feel like the bread and butter should be in the passing game. Still be able to run a ball because the, the, the more you can do, right? But um, I feel like they should emphasize the passing game a lot more. Take advantage of the NFL's rules. I uh, said, now, also, do you think Harbaugh is too soft as a coach? Like, I want him to have a little bit of Mike Tomlin, Bruce Arians in him. I want Harbaugh to keep it real in losses and not give us the same moral victory in every loss press conference because some of the fans will run with it and use it as a crutch and an excuse. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not a fan of moral victories at all. If you won, you won. Great job. If you lost, you lost. You lost. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of the moral victory stuff. Uh, I know Harbaugh. Harbaugh's a good talker. That is one thing. Uh, you, you ask a lot of people, what's Harbaugh's best quality? They will say uh, he's a motivator. Uh, and that's true. You see that in the press conferences, whether the Ravens win or lose. Uh, if they lose, um, if they win, yeah, he'll say everything. But if they lose, uh, it will be a very uh, sugar-coated loss um, a lot of the times. It'll be a sugar-coated loss. And sometimes if you watch a press conference, sometimes, well, you could tell by his vibe. Like, he'll come, he'll have his arms like that, have his arms spread out, and he'll... <sighs> And he'll, he'll do that thing with his head. <laughs> like, you, you could tell, like, if you put the thing, if you put the uh, video on mute and you listen to it, or you can't listen to it on mute, but if you watch it on mute, watch a presser after a loss, you can always tell when it's a loss versus when it's a win by just Harbaugh's, uh, his mannerisms. Um, but anyway, speaking of fans, I want to know, what do you think of our fan base? Because we're definitely split on one side. You have blind fans who drink the John Harbaugh pro post-game press of Kool-Aid and become oblivious to problems that we have. And on the other side, uh, of we have the realist side, like myself, and we don't look for moral victories. We don't look for excuses when things go bad. We want to see improvement. We want to see the issues that we have fixed, but we get called fake fans because we want to see improvement. Yeah, um, you got all different kinds of fans, and you can't tell anybody how to be a fan of the team. People can't. I, I hate when people try to police how to be a fan of whatever team. Oh, you're not a real fan if you do that. Oh, if you do this, you're not a real fan. Man, shut up. Shut up. Oh, nobody want to hear that. Like, you, you cannot tell people how to live their lives. You can't tell them how, like, that, that, is, that is one of the most annoying things that people do. They try to police how other people are a fan of whatever team that they root for. No, you, you be a fan how you want to be a fan. Let other people be a fan how they want to be a fan. It is not that serious, man. It never is, man. Um, and lastly, I would like to know what are your thoughts on what Ed Reed said about our culture. If you haven't seen it, he basically did an interview or something where he was asked about the state of the culture and how it changed since him, Ray Suggs, Lodi ne left, and how John uh, has had a hand in that. We, we actually did a video on that. We did a whole video on that. Um, we said, thank you again for the time. As always, repping that team. Keep it clean. I'm out. I, I love this. this. I appreciated this a lot. Thank you. Ooh, we got another long one. This one came from my boy Rodell. He said, what's going on, my guy? Good to see you still doing what you do best, which is cover our Ravens and deliver five-star content. Uh, got to do got, oh, gotta do a deep dive into this convo. So here we go. Uh oh here we go. Uh, this is called Praise versus Bling. He said, how much are players responsible for an NFL game? How much are coaches responsible for? Sound like two dumb questions, right? Actually, no, it doesn't at all. Because both of them, they, they both share a lot of the responsibility when it comes to game. It's coach's job to put players in position to win, to put players in position to have success. And it's the player's job to take that coach and, and, and execute, to make it happen on the field. Um, he said, I need some answers, my man, because the praise versus blame seems to be off to me. Coach's jobs are to create a game plan for the team and to put them in the best position to win. I should have read it before. Um, and he said, players' jobs are to execute those game plans in order to result in a win. What I see is when we win, only Lamar gets praise. Yes, our QB1 is a gift from the man upstairs. Yes, he is a historic talent. Yes, he is a superstar. But this ain't tennis. He is not out there by himself. That's true. He has to rely on 52 other men during the course of a game. Has he carried the offense throughout the season? Yes. But he has also made boneheaded and questionable plays. Maybe not this past season specifically. Oh, no, there, there have been some this past season. Um, but there have also been times when he played bad and the defense won us a game, or even Tucker. Well, yeah, that that <laughs> that Brown, that four interception Brown scale, it was like, what? I remember after that game, like, 
it's a it's it's a it's a game that the Ravens won. So it's like, okay, let's go. It's an AFC game. So within the conference, but then on top of that, it's a game within the division that the Ravens won. But I remember after that game feeling like, uh, okay, it didn't feel like the Ravens won. Lamar threw four interceptions. It's like, well, how do we win with four interceptions? But you know, you know Baker, who they trying to get rid of now. But anyway. Uh, he said, but on the flip side, it's the same thing. Is Giro a good coordinator? To me, yes. Is he the best? No. Giro has flaws just like Lamar and everyone else. However, every single mistake, hiccup, or loss is not that man's fault. That's true. That's true. Uh, while some play calls are weird and head scratches. <laughs> That's true as well. Not all of them are. While Lamar delivers wins, we've seen Josh and Tyler step into his system and look great, honestly. Oh, I wouldn't say look great. I wouldn't say that. That part I, I, I disagree with. Is Giro the worst? No. But has Josh Johnson and Tyler Huntley looked great in assist? Great? No. They've been, Tyler Huntley, uh, Tyler Huntley he, he's, he's, look, he's look good sometimes. Great, though. God, greatest, greatest pushing it for me. But anyway, he said, whether Giro stays or goes. Oh, Giro's staying. He ain't going nowhere. But he said, I'm a root for my team, but I just want the praise to come appropriately and the blame appropriately. Uh, when Lamar throws an interception, miss an open deep pass, or even take a 15 yard sack when he could have simply thrown the ball away, we can't point at Giro. Oh, got a scam likely call right in the middle of a question from subscribers. These scammers are crazy. Um, he said, there's been plenty of film this season where receivers are open and LJ just don't deliver. On the flip side, when we know a team's weakness, Giro has to take advantage of it. Pound the ball if the opposing team is weak at stopping it. Air it out if the opposing team's secondary is vulnerable. I think I'm done, but yes, we know LJ is the engine, but what's an engine without a car? In this game of football, it's a team game and everyone is accountable, not just for their job, but for the man next to them. Yes, that's true. That's true. So everybody, that's why I've been saying all off season. Everybody got to step it up. Everybody. Hall EDC, Bashadi EDC, Harbaugh, G Row, uh, Mike McDonald. Well, he ain't got to step anything up because he ain't got nothing to step from. Because he, anyway, you <laughs> get what I'm saying? And then the player Lamar, uh, Hollywood, off everybody, man. Everybody got to step it up, man, for the team to really have. Success and yeah, praise versus blame. Um, uh, there, there's some people who will throw everything at one person, like you mentioned, whether good or bad, whether praise or blame. That's true, but it's important to take a more balanced look at everything. Um, we yeah, we know, like you mentioned, if, when it comes to the offense, G. Ro, he has his weaknesses. He certainly does, but we also know Lamar Jackson. He has his weaknesses too. He definitely does. Um. For I think for a lot of fans, frustration is because it starts with coaching. Obviously, the players got to execute, but it starts with coaching. Uh, you mentioned how fans, like if Lamar takes a 15-yard sack, a lot of fans will point, oh, Giro, Giro, Giro. Um, and, yeah, we've seen that a lot. And that, see, that can be tricky now, though, because, yeah, Lamar, he could throw the ball away, get rid of it. But it all depends on the flow of the game. Like, this, this is what I keep saying about Greg Roman. He got to get a, a better flow for the game. You mentioned how he got to take better advantages of teams' weaknesses. If they can't stop the run, run the ball. If they can't stop the pass, they'll air it out. But, um, like, on the, it, it all, context matters. That's my point. Context matters. Because um, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, if Lamar take a 15-yard sack, oh, yeah, that's, that's all on Lamar. And a lot of it could be, but some of that could be on Giro, too, because if, say, for instance, the offensive line, they've been doing bad all game long. They ain't been blocking all game long. And you doing nothing but calling these, these wide receivers and tight ends to go deep. And Lamar got to drop back, and the offensive line ain't been blocking good all day, all game long. And Lamar, he start pressing. He start pressing because it's like, oh, man, these dudes can't block, but we're trying to get a big play. So he holds on to the ball, trying to make something happen, trying to wait for somebody to come open. And then he take a sack. So it's like it, it can go both ways. So it all just depends on the context. But excellent breakdown as usual. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Nathan. He said, Engraven, first, just want to say love the videos. And anytime there's Ravens news, I know what channel to go to. I, I appreciate it, Nate. Um, anyways, I have a short, simple question. What would you think about the Ravens signing uh, Kaiser White? I don't know if it would be a Ravens type of move since he's a young player. Since he's a young player, um, but looking at his stats, he seems like a player that is on the rise. I also, I feel like we will be able to get him on a cheaper deal. What are your thoughts? Love the videos. I appreciate it. I'm not, you know, I'm straight up. I'm not familiar with him at all. Kaiser White. Oh, he used to play safety in college, but oh, he got drafted in 2018. 
But he's a linebacker. I'm I'm honestly not familiar with his game at all. Oh, he got drafted by the Chargers. Oh, he got drafted as a safety by the Chargers. Okay. So they um Hmm. Okay, and, and in his rookie year, they move him from safety to linebacker. Okay. All right. Cool. Oh, and he played right away. See, that's when you know they really want to get you on the field. They, they, they'll play you right away. Oh, he intercepted Joe Flacco in 2019. Well, okay, so this guy must be an elite linebacker. Yeah, but I, I just, I, I really don't know um, anything about his game, like, at all. So he will be have he will have to be somebody that I will come back and revisit. Um, but I yeah I just I'm just super unfamiliar with him, his game, his name. I, I just I don't know anything about him, whatsoever. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, but no seriously I would uh just have to really just come back and look at him because that has not been a name that I heard about uh, at all. Shout out to Graven.